This is Precal 12, Chapter 5.3. We're going to be looking at solving exponential equations. And you have two ways to solve this. One is to find a common base and solve for the exponents, or you can use a calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do this algebraically. We have 27 raised to the power of x minus 4 equals 9 raised to the power of 3x. We need to find a common base. So 27 is 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of x minus 4. And 9 is 3 to the power of 2. And that's raised to the power of 3x. This is a power to the power rule. And we multiply the exponents. So this is 3 to the power of 3x minus 12. And this is 3 to the power of 6x. Now that we have the same base, we can just equate the exponents. So this is 3x minus 12 equals 6x. And we just solve as normal. So 3x equals negative 12. x equals negative 4. Let's look at another example. 125 times root 5 and 5 to the power of 3x. The base for 125 is 5 raised to the power of 3, and we have 5 raised to the power of a half equals 5 to the power of 3x. This is 5 to the power of 7 over 2. We add 3 to a half, that's 3 and a half. That's a proper fraction, and we change it to an improper fraction, and that's 3 times 2 plus 1, 7 over 2. This is equal to 5 raised to the power of 3x. We have the same base. We can now equate the exponents. 7 over 2 equals 3x. Therefore, x equals 7 over 6. Now, we have more word problems to solve. And you want to determine whether it's a growth problem or a decay problem. One problem that you're going to run into is you need to determine whether you are given a change or a rate. Then figure out what the base is, r, for the exponential function. So, if we're given something like the amount is decreased by 9%, that is a change. So what we have is r equals 1 minus 0 0.09. 1 meaning it's a whole, or 100%. And 100% minus 9% is 91%, and that's 0 0.91. Now, when we're giving something like the amount remaining is 0 0.89 after dot dot dot, that's actually a rate. We don't have to subtract anything. We just use the ratio. Another way of having a change is an example like this. There is 15% more after dot, dot, dot. R equals 1 plus 15% is 0.15. So our base is 1.15. Or you could say that that's your ratio. In English, there are many ways to phrase a question. So you have to read carefully, and I can't show you all the different ways to form these questions. And a note is to be careful about rounding. Don't assume rounding to the nearest is correct. So you have to think about it. Sometimes you'll need to round down. Sometimes you'll need to round up. And I will show you a few of these in the following question. But first, let's go over some more formulas. In compound interest problems, we have A of T, A meaning the amount. We have A naught times 1 plus I over N in brackets, raised to the power of nt, where i is the interest rate. And usually that's a percentage, so we need to divide that by 100. n is the number of compoundings per year. So let's look at an example. 
An investment of $3,000 is put into a term deposit at 1.5%, which is compounded four times per year. What is the value after two years? And what is the value after five years? So here we have our initial amount, A0. Here we have our interest rate, I. And here we have our compounding, which is N. And we have two values for T that we need to compute. Now we substitute the values into our formula. We have A of T equals 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.015 over 4 raised to the power of 4T. Now we compute the values that we want, A of 2. And 4 times 2 is 8. We put that into the calculator. We get an approximate value of $3,091.19. After 5 years, 4 times 5 is 20. And we get an approximate value of $3,233.20. Let's look at another example. An investment gets 4.5% interest compounded annually. How long will it take for the investment to triple in value? Here we have I. Compounded annually means once per year, so this is N equals 1. And our initial amount is not specified. And since we're looking for the amount to triple in value, we can have any initial value. So we'll say A0 equals 1, because 1 is the easiest. And A of C is some value that we're looking for, needs to equal triple the value, which is 3A0, or simply 3. So we have A of T equals 1 times 1 plus 0 0.045 over 1, which is just 0 0.045, and that's to the power of t. Now we have a of c, and we want a of c to equal 3. And this is 1 times 1 1.045 to the power of c. Now, on our calculator, we can put the 3 as y1, and we put our expression in or function in as y2. We need to set the window to a reasonable amount. It should not take more than 30 years for this investment to triple. And because we're, we know the intersection is 3, we can set the range from negative 1 to 4. And we get the calculator to figure out the intersection between these two curves. And it occurs at 24.958 years. And we want to round this answer up to 25 years. And to see why, let's look at a table of values. We look at 24 years, and the investment has gone to 2.876 times the original value. So that's not quite triple. If we look at 25 years, that's at 3.0054. Therefore, it's reached triple the value. Here's an interesting generalization. And it's used to approximate the number of years for an investment to double. It's called the rule of 72. So, how long does it take for an investment to double that compounds annually at 5%? So what we do is 72 divided by the interest rate, which is 5. And this gives us roughly 14.4 years. Now, we do this on a calculator. 2 is equal to 1.05x. And you will find that x is approximately 14.2 years. Very close to 14.4 years. And that's great for a generalization because we can do this in our head and it's very close to the calculator answer. Let's look at another type of problem. A filter will reduce the amount of light by 91%. A person wants to watch a solar eclipse, 
So the amount of light needs to be reduced to 0.003%. How many filters do we need to make this happen? First of all, our target value is 0 0.00003. We need two more zeros because this is a percentage. We need to divide by 100. Our rate is 1 minus 0 0.91. This is a change. Reducing is a change. It's not an actual ratio. So our ratio is 0 0.09. So our exponential equation, yn equals 1, because we have 100% of the light, times 0 0.09 raised to the power of 1n. We have a filter, so k equals 1. Time is not involved. So this is a per unit problem. Now we have yn. We're searching for the n equals 0 0.00003 equals 0 0.09 to the power of n. Again, we enter this on the calculator. y1, y2, and I'm just approximating that we need no more than six filters. So our domain is zero to six. And since this target value is very small, I'm gonna make the range 0 0.0001, which is one e to the minus four. So we plot this on the calculator, we find the intersection, we get this value. And if we look at four filters, we look at this value and we get 0 0.00006, which is too much light being let through. Means you could still have the possibility of going blind because you're getting double, more than double the amount of light that you should be. And that's why we round up in this case to five filters, and now we get 0 0.00059. That means the light has been reduced enough that you won't go blind. So 4.3 shouldn't be rounded off to four. It needs to be rounded up to five. So the note is round up. And You'll probably want to make a note here, four filters. We'll still make you go blind. And that's it for this lesson.